Hello everyone, welcome to Das Geek. We are going to show you something really awesome today, how to create and edit your own YouTube videos using completely 100% free open source software. So there are going to be a couple of pieces of software we're going to use and download today, but one of the key ones you're going to need uh, that will do most of the heavy lifting for you is a software package called OBS or Open Broadcast Software. Now all the software I'm going to show you today while being completely free I will have linked below so you can just click on those links and download it. Uh, if you're not familiar with searching for some of this open source software I highly recommend you utilize the links. I don't get any commission or anything from it. Obviously they're free so why would I? And have no affiliation with any of these companies. Uh, but I suggest using those links just because there's a lot of um, websites out there that will attempt to trick you to pay for this software or they will offer it free as well on their site but when you download it it comes with a bunch of ads or things but the actual sources of this software, the open source community that's developed it, uh, have these packaged on their own website, they have no ads, no viruses or software uh, um, malware that will be on your computer so definitely recommend using the links going to these software sites directly uh, so that you can get the software as it was intended um, all of the software I'm going to use or show you today is based on a Windows PC uh, if you're using Linux a lot of the software is available on that platform as well for you to download uh, but this is mainly for Windows so um, I will get right into it once you download OBS uh, which is what I recommend to be one of your first downloads, you're going to see a software package like this. Now, here's what's really neat and robust about this tool. I am recording this uh, tutorial right now utilizing OBS. This is live. So you're seeing the actual scenes and sources and things that I have set up to do the simple tutorial. Now, when you download this software, what you're going to see is completely blank. You're not going to see anything here. You're not going to see anything down here because you need to add in those scenes and sources. And this is what makes uh, OBS a really robust tool for you to use uh, because you can really start recording almost immediately with just some simple steps that we're going to take here. And I'm not going to go into all the advanced settings for these tools. I'm going to stick to a lot of the default. Uh, the reason being is you can get into the advanced stuff on your own. Uh, I may do some videos on each piece of software one by one, but this is really just to get you the software you need, get you started, and have you start playing around and editing your own videos right away. Uh, so we're going to stick with a lot of the default settings. So again, you're going to come here down to scenes. You're going to right click. You're going to click add scene. It's going to say, what do you want to name the scene? You're going to name it whatever you want and click OK. Now generally if you're doing a live stream or something along those lines, you're going to want to name your scene something more robust here. Um, I set up some scenes here just playing around. Uh, this wouldn't be uh, something that I would utilize. Say if I was Twitch streaming, I would name these something more uh, meaningful to me because you can switch scenes on the fly. So if you're a Twitch streamer and you're going on break, you can have one that's, uh, you know, break and it just displays an image, a funny image or a video or something like that that plays for um, your audience to see while you're going on break. Uh, in my case, I'm just doing an offline video recording, so I only really need one scene. So once you click that scene, it'll show up here as whatever you named it. And then you're just going to right click here and you're going to add a source. And the source is what do you want to capture in that scene? Do you want to capture a window? Do you want to capture a monitor? Which is what I'm utilizing here, therefore monitor capture. And in my case, I have two monitors, so I selected only capture monitor two. Uh, you can do an image, as we talked about earlier, if you're doing live streaming or something along those lines, you want to switch to an image, text, CLR browser, video capture device. So this is, if you have a separate video capture device, um, a lot of the professional streamers will utilize um, those options for video gaming. It takes less stress on your computer, etc. Or you want a webcam if you want to show your face. Hopefully you're good looking. Uh, and not going to scare everybody. You can click that and I have one of those here to show you. And game capture. So game capture, if you want to capture just the footage inside of a game, you would use game capture and that would allow you um, to, for the, the audience not to see anything else but what's inside the game and what you're doing there. 
Um, so for the video capture device, right now I'm just using the monitor. If I add video capture device, boom, look, my webcam, Logitech webcam pops up here in this little screen. I chose the size here. A lot of people would want to make that uh, small. And you can look at that. I can move that. It's so robust on the fly. So if you want to move it into this corner, this is how your live streamers on Twitch and everything else do it while you're streaming because maybe a lot of the video actions happening down in this area so I want to move my webcam over here you can uh, and you can turn it off on the fly as well um, and all I have to do here is go to properties right click on it do properties you can see my webcam here you can see I've configured it for this small box resolution and you've got all kinds of things you can play with here as you want but just obviously extremely robust really cool options here in OBS the more you play the more you're gonna be blown away by it um, the last thing I'm gonna show you here is your settings so here under broadcast settings this is where you're gonna choose uh, if you wanna do a live stream where it'll connect you directly to say twitch services etc or you're gonna do a file output only if you're doing an offline tutorial which is what I'm doing and then under file path this is where you're gonna to wanna to name your video so you're going to want to save it as an mp4 because that's what you can put into your video editing software or even upload into YouTube. You're going to choose a file name, whatever you want, and click save. I'm going to cancel out there and it's going to populate that video under youtube.mp4. So this is the file path you're going to search when you want to go find that file after you're done recording. So once you set your file path, you set your mode, you're going to click apply, click OK, and then you have an option to preview stream so you can see kind of what your users are going to see and then you're going to have an option for start recording and uh, obviously I'm recording live so I can't show you that but just click start recording and boom it's going to start right away and as you talk you can see your microphone jump and you can move this over into another monitor so your users don't see it but you can watch what your users are seeing live so it's just that simple, really robust piece of software. You do your recording, it's going to give you that MP4 file. Now, if you didn't choose to save it as an MP4, the, the default is actually an FLV file. So man, maybe you made the best offline recording of your life. You didn't make any mistakes. It was perfect, but you've got this FLV file. You can't upload it into really anything useful, and you need to convert it. So quickly, you can download the program Handbrake. Handbrake is another completely free tool, and you can resource it into the file type that you need. So, again, the link's below, but you just download Handbrake. They don't have a donate feature on this page that I could find anyways, uh, but hopefully they add one at some point. And Handbrake looks like this, and again, another really powerful but simple tool to use uh, that... that um, you can get started with right away but also has a lot of advanced features if you want to get into that so all you're going to do here is click source you're going to choose the file that you want uh, to convert you're going to find the FLV file and um, then you're going to choose the destination for you where you want the export to be and the container do you want an mp4 mkv file you can choose if you want web optimized you also have some presets over here if you want to make it uh, the file output something that you look at on your iPhone and you want it to be uh, customized for that or your iPad and as I'm clicking these you'll actually see over here it's changing some of the sizes and sources so that it's for that format of that particular device but in our case we're just going to do a normal 1920 by 1080 that's going to be our output and then you would just click start and boom it's going to convert that file for you you go to that file path that you set here and you will have your file now most of us don't make perfect videos in one take or we may want to add some scenes or do some editing of our own and that's where Movie Maker comes into play so Windows Movie Maker is free you know it's produced by Windows and another cool thing about it is that it works on Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10 so here's a quick video that I had selected um, of mine. This isn't something that I was ready to uh, upload to YouTube, but I've got all kinds of powerful features that I can do here within this. So within this scene here, I can click play, then I can pause and say, you know what? I really want to add a title here. I want to call this DOS Geek. And then maybe in addition to that, 
you know, I want to add a caption because I said something that wasn't quite right and I want to edit it here and say, uh, don't listen to anything I just said. There you go. So now I've added that into the video itself. Just that simple. And here's where it gets really robust. I can even make it have some simple effects just by clicking up here. I could do a little Star Wars thing, you know, where it just kind of flips down. Boom. Or I can do some spinning in, or you can add any type of effects that you want with that caption. So here you can make intros, you can add music uh, in here. So I can click add music and create my own intro. I can add uh, webcam videos, I can add other videos. So if I have an intro that I use every time, I may record it once and just add it at the beginning and maybe end. I can add soundtracks in here and share it right directly to YouTube from Windows Movie Maker. Uh, so again, whether you're on Windows 7 or 8, I believe it may come standard uh, with the Windows Essentials. With Windows 10, even though it doesn't list it here, you can still download it on Windows 10 right now and utilize that software. It's a really powerful piece of software that I highly recommend. The last thing I'm going to mention is VLC. Um, VLC is just a great tool to have. Uh, for playing any type of media type. So even if you have the FLV and you didn't use Handbrake yet to convert it, you could still watch it if you had a VLC player. And a VLC uh, will allow you to do all kinds of, um, will allow you to play and watch and listen to all kinds of different formats. They do have a donate button. It's well worth a few dollars. Uh, recommend it. Start at five. Uh, but once you download it, it is completely free. No ads, no nothing like that. And uh, is a really robust software. So that's all you need. That's how simple it is to start creating YouTube videos. If you've got knowledge in programming or you want to do a webcam show where you're showing how to build a computer or anything like that, OBS is really your go-to software. Movie Maker allows you to add some flair and pizzazz. All of them, and Handbrake allows you to do the conversions. VLC allows you to watch any format. Four pieces of software that you can use that will allow you to really do anything you're going to need from live streaming to offline tutorials. Very cool tools. I use them myself. I love them. So get in there, start playing with all the different settings, see what you can break, and feel free to comment below if you have some other software uh, that you like to utilize uh, instead of the open source software that I've used that may also be free. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up below if you've liked this. Hit subscribe if you really loved it. I appreciate all the support and look forward to making some future videos for you.